everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to this week's episode review, where we have the blonde villain that reads all the newspapers, and a lot of them. Like, I yet, I've yet i yet to see this guy without a newspaper in his hands. But guys, this week's episode is about Grandina and Chaos Breaker. So, before I go too much further and I spoil anything, please go check out the description below. It has the link to the original episode in there. I do not own anything of Card Fight Vanguard related. I am not sponsored in any way, any of that good stuff. I am just doing an episode review. So, moving on, spoilers ahead, you've been warned. So, as I said, this guy has way too much newspapers. Not really important to the plot. Also, they're now filming little kids on cameras, because... Um, creepiness factor has gone up. So, if you guys don't know, this is Chaos Breaker, or Noah, which is sort of the focus of the sh episode this week. <clears throat> but we'll get more into that here in a second. Moving on, this is also Grandina, Darkface, so if you haven't been keeping up with the series, again, go watch it and come back, and I'd, and she's sort of like the Mega Colony Darkface Queen, and it's all about them herd chasing Q4 down to get revenge for Darkface and trying to stop Chaos Breaker from doing whatever shenanigans. Now, with that being said, I'm going to do a quick interjection for myself. Um, Guys, last week, seven days ago, I released episode eight of the Card Fight Vanguard review, it wasn't, it was the actual number episode 8, the second one I've done on the channel. But guys, you killed it with 400 views. And that, that number is steadily growing every day. And I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed it that much. So based off those, I'm going to keep these up every week until either you guys don't want them anymore or you tell me I should no longer live and I will then delete my YouTube channel and um, follow my passion of book writing. And when that fails, I will just cry in the corner. But moving forward with this week's episode review. So like I said, it's all about her hunting down Q4 and Chaos Break. Because at this point, everyone in the show, um, or not everyone, but all the apostles don't think Chaos Break is really invested in the revival of um, Giza. <coughs> so the big boss, the head honcho, blonde guy that reads newspapers, that's super mysterious, sends Grandina after him. So they're hunting him, and that's sort of what this picture is actually based off of, is um, Darkface keeping an eye on Noah and his shenanigans. So we move on, and she praises Darkface moving forward. Um, Noah, fe or not Noah, Chaos Breaks, I realizes that he's being hunted, and hey, look, books. I didn't see that during the episode. I was too busy checking other details. But um, no, uh, Chaos is like realizes that he's being hunted <coughs> and needs an opportunity to escape. So he tricks, he lets Noah go briefly, um, free, and tricks his wonderful teammates into taking him under shelter. Being that, you know, friend, friends, friends are going to help friend from danger. So yeah, that's how things sort of escalate. They call Kamui Misaki, and then Misaki drives like a madman. We don't see her till the end of the episode, but she drives like a madman. But yeah, so Noah is released they go for it and it sort of quickly escalates um into a fight which i really i forgot to take a screenshot of um grandina fighting one of these two so maybe i'll maybe i was gonna leave that mysterious but i'm not going to so grandina fights him because he's the leader of their team so he feels like it's his job to protect noah and this guy the uh, murakumo player <coughs> So, during their fight, he's having a flashback of all the good times these guys have had together. Because real friendship and, you know, brotherhood and card fight vanguard stuff. Imagine it. So, overall, it's really interesting. I, I, it, the fight was really good going up to this point. And then we get to see it. In comes the Zoo Xeroth Dragon. And overall, I'm not as... I want to say, now this is initial, its initial power is not what I thought. So it has 25k, so it's not overwhelming, it's not like a 40k base unit. But what it does is very scary. Um, So we're going to move forward, and the next image I show you is from the actual show. As always, it's 36k. I took several screenshots of this by mistake. But yeah, here's its power, it's 36, there's the Dino King himself. Overall, I want to state that I love the art for this card, it looks really cool. And it looks much more ferocious than its initial artwork did, so I'm really happy about that. 
moving forward, um, also this is her effect for her um, power release. It has a nice green and black tone to it. And her deck's really scary. So her deck literally absorbs Counter Blast from the other opponent, which you already knew if you knew Grandina's skill. So um, its skill is to draw a card, choose a card from hand, call it. And then bestow the maximum power to that unit. What does bestow, bestow um, the maximum power to that unit? Well, obviously, if you can't see by this, there's a little win condition on the card, but I'll get to that uh, after. So it adds quintillion nine to its raw power now i only got the screenshot because it had to be a real quick screenshot so i sort of got it when it was doing five nine six two uh five nine two six zero what well as we know that's kind of important because now they actually go through and draw each an individual panel for um the number increasing so it's not like we don't see it which must take a lot of time for that but yeah, so, um, it has over, let's see, is the next picture? Nope, that's of that. So, it gets over frigging godlike powers here. I'll bring up its actual image. So, it's as ultimate stride, as you know. Counter Blast 2, when this is placed on Van, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card. Choose up to one card from hand. Call it to your ground. Until end of turn, until end of turn, the power of the called unit increases or decreases to this and gets continuous this unit cannot be chosen by card effects trigger effects cannot be assigned to it and auto when this unit deals damage to your opponent you win the game um um i hope you have enough uh generation guards left over and other things um now with this being said it can't be chosen by card effects means that if a unit that you know reverts an attack or something or um I, I don't know if it really counts g guards either but it just literally shreks the field if if you don't have enough to guard this you auto lose that's the first attack of the battle you're gonna spend everything you have to guard against it and then you're gonna lose the game because you can't guard the vanguard attack so yes um powerful so, if it wasn't already, he loses, she wins. Um, overall, that's not too terrible of an outcome. I sort of expected it. This is a Xeroth Dragon of Death Guarding Zodith being released. And then it just literally shatters. Oh, yeah. And here's the um maximum attack. I'll let you figure out if this was the ending move or not of the game. But, yeah, look at that. That power level. You can't assign trigger effects to it. You can't target it. But imagine using this in a Bloom deck, guys. So you can choose the order of how skills go off in Vanguard. Remember that. So you call a unit with Bloom, and it gets additional power. So you choose your Vanguard. You choose the Vanguard skill to go first. It increases it to that number, and then you literally get a power increase from there, from whatever how many times Bloom goes off. Which if the game goes over well, you just increase. You don't even need to give trigger effects to it. It just avoids card effects in general, so... But it doesn't avoid its own card effects, and Bloom goes off when you get it. When it goes off. So if it says, give this unit power, or choose another one... If it says choose another, you can't, but... There's there's gonna be decks around this thing that make it stupidly overpowered. And then there's just gonna be stuff like Big Belly that just ignores the retire cost. I mean, you should win no matter what during the turn you use this card. Unless your opponent has two PGs and they're at three damage, then um, I don't know what to tell you. But moving on to the next, um, this is sort of just the screenshot of it obliterating a building. And yeah, that's sort of all my screenshots I have. But guys, this card, I think it is by far the most powerful Xerath Dragon yet. It literally has an auto win condition. It gives the most power and it does give you a neutral bonus meaning that you draw a card but you have to basically ditch a card to draw so you're not losing anything but you're not gaining anything besides the bill sorry wow well, it's been a long day guys you you don't lose anything but you don't gain anything and you only gain the ability to win like literally i don't know how else to put this card into perspective for you but guys that's it for now i've been silver wolf and i'll see you all later peace